Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name's Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. In today's video, we are talking about plant mist, the 17 essential plant nutrients every day, back to back, leading up to Christmas. So in today's video, we are talking about a primary macronutrient we all like to call phosphorus. So phosphorus is a definite macronutrient. It is the reason why it is that middle number that we see on all our fertilizer packs because it is literally found in every single living cell of a plant. I'm just going to name off a few, several uh, key functions in which phosphorus does. So it does energy transfer, photosynthesis, transformation of sugars and starches, nutrient movement within the plant, and transfers of genetic characteristics from one generation to the next. Sorry, Ella just flew over top of you guys and distracted me. So you can see there's a ton of functionality when it comes to phosphorus and what it does. So one thing we found with phosphorus is that it is highly mobile in the plant, meaning it is similar to that of nitrogen. It is going to move wherever the plant needs it. That means if there's a phosphorus deficiency, you are likely gonna see it in those lower leaves first and foremost, only because it's going to send all its energy, all its excess or whatever it has left to the new roots and shoots for survival. So phosphate is the, the type of ion it needs to be or the molecule it needs to be for plant uptake for bioavailability. So there's orthophosphate ion um, and then the secondary orthophosphate ion, slight differences in the two. One has two hydrogens attached, the other one is just a uh, hydrophosphate, which just one hydrogen, not two. Version it chooses to uptake is gonna be completely dependent on the pH. So as the pH goes up, the phosphate version that is absorbed is actually the one with only the one hydrogen, not with the two hydrogens. And so when it comes to making this bioavailable version of phosphate, it actually is done through mineralization. So the microbes literally decompose organic material to the point that it goes back to its mineral form. So right back to its mineral, nothing reminiscent of organic whatsoever. And this is actually why when you look at different types of fertilizer, especially organic fertilizer, you're gonna see that the phosphate level is really, really low. That P on the number is gonna be very low in quantity because it's in an organic form, so it's not bioavailable yet. It has to be mineralized which can take some time. Now there are products out there such as Gaia Green, for example, that uses rock phosphate. So this is a mined version of phosphate that is actually literally taken off of a mountain. And so this is a mineralized form, which some decomposition needs to take place, but not a ton. And by decomposition, I mean more like mechanical degradation of the product more so than anything. That means it's another great reason if you're a houseplant person to have a microbially active potting soil, not a potting soil that is devoid or sterilized of all microbes good or bad. Phosphorus is actually root interception, but again, which we've talked about before with some of the other nutrients we've talked about during plant mist and root inter interception means it literally has to T-bone that uh, nutrient. The root needs to T-bone that nutrient. Specifically with phos, it needs the, the root head is the best place to grab it from. And if interception has to happen at a rate that's so high because it needs so much phosphorus that typically speaking, we would need or we would benefit from the mycelial web. So mycorrhizae fungi, having that relationship with a plant is huge. So using an inoculant is really going to help with phosphate capture. So again, it does the root tip. So the leaning head, the apical meristem on the root, and then the actual tips of the root hairs all have to come in contact with phosphate in the soil in order for it to be absorbed. So a really great sign of phosphate deficiency is really dark green or purple leaves on the bottom portions. And I always see this in corn and tomato plants, actually. I always see phosphate being a limiting factor. I've gotten several photos sent to me through DM on Instagram, Facebook, showing me photos of corn and tomatoes that have those green or those purple leaves. That is a phosphate issue. Now, to rate in which they're being produced, and they tend to linger or hang out 
in the lower portions of the plant. So they're gonna show up in the oldest leaves on that plant. Whereas an excess of phosphate in the soil system literally is just death. The plant just dies. And it's because the plant actually isn't able to uptake a huge majority of all the micronutrients in the presence of excess phosphate. And that's why it's really important if you're using an organic amendment. If you're placing organic amendments on your soil and you're dumping them on, you wanna make sure you are calculating properly the volume you need to apply based on soil testing or try to under apply when possible because once all that phosphate is mineralized you may end up with deficiencies that show up in the form of a calcium or a boron or a copper or who knows what else chlorine for example and that ultimately will kill your plant and probably the coolest fun fact before we close up this plant mist video is that phosphorus the largest, the world's largest reserve of phosphorus is underneath the water. It's literally the ground floor of the ocean. So the reason for this is because phosphorus is both mineralized, animals eat it, they excrete waste, waste ends up in the soil. It's decomposed and mineralized back into a usable form for the plant. The rest of the phosphate or the phosphorus is actually off mountains and weathering of rock. And as that rock weathers down, it kind of gets ran off into the water systems, into rivers, streams, lakes, oceans, that sort of thing. So a huge portion of our phosphorus is underwater. Just fun fact. Fun fact, if it wasn't mined naturally, that's where it comes from. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments down below what you learned today about the wonderful macronutrient of phosphorus, and I will talk to you guys next time. Phosphorus, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.